Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing good. It's another day, a good one outside, although it did rain here and it looks a little overcast still. When I woke up this morning, I opened the door and looked outside. Well, it had rained overnight, and I didn't even know that. There were puddles all over. Um, Mumu has gone for a walk, and I'm getting ready to read a really fun book to you, I think. It's called Herbert the Lion. Manny, Ruby, and I used to read this book all the time. Um, they would sit on my lap here in the studio, and I'd get to read it to them. I like the book, and I think you will too. But before we start the book, we're going to try something just a little different. I'm going to try to play you a song on another computer that I think you might like. It was written by a man named John Prine, who I like very much. I think his music is very good. You may like it too. Um, I just thought we'd try and play this and see if everybody did like it. The, the song is called Egg and Daughter Night. Egg and Daughter Night. That's an unusual name for a song. Well, let's hear what the song sounds like. Let's press play. Right here. If you like your apple sweet and your streets are not concrete, you'd be in your bed by nine every night. Take your hands, man, cornfed gal. And your best friend's four-eyed pal To a treat right down the street That's dynamite Now let your conscience be your guide If you put your foot inside You wish you left you well enough alone When you got held to pay Put the truth on railway And blame it on that Oh, crazy bone Crazy bone, crazy bone, crazy bone. Where well, you wish you left your well enough alone. But when you got held the pain, put the truth on their way and blame it on that old crazy bone. And don't be stuck up in Alaska when you should be in Nebraska on a Thursday. When it's egg and daughter night When the farmers come to town And they spread them eggs around And they drop their daughters down at the roller rink Well, you're probably standing there With your slick back, well cream hair Your lucky's in, your daddy's fine to stone If they knew what you were thinking They'd run you out of Lincoln Just blame it on that Oh, crazy bone Crazy bone Crazy bone Well, you must have left your wisdom to that home If they knew what you were thinking They'd run you out of Lincoln Just blame it on that Oh, crazy bone Here comes that crazy bone Yeah, blame it on that old crazy 
And I hope that experiment worked, but we won't know for a little while because I have to read the book first, and then I'll look at the video and see if you could hear it. I don't even know if you can. We'll see. If you can't hear it, I have to read the book again. If you can, I hope you like that. That was a song by John Prine. Okay, let's get to this book by Carl Claire Turley Newberry. It's called Herbert the Lion. Let's see what this is about, because I see a lion having tea. Here's the inside cover. I like to show you that. Maya drew one for me. There's a lion, and he's running after somebody who has food falling out of a basket. I think that man was scared of the lion, but I bet the lion just wanted the food. This is a cute picture, and it's the name of the book. It's called Herbert the Lion. He looks like a baby lion here, doesn't he? I bet he is a baby lion. Let's just see. There once was a little girl named Sally who wanted a baby lion. She already had a doll's house, two dolls, a tea set, and a toy zebra on wheels. But she didn't like any of them. She wanted a lion, a real live lion. I think that that would be very dangerous because lions are great big and they have sharp claws. But let's see what happened. So one day, her mother brought her, down, brought her one from downtown. Then Sally was very happy. She named the lion cub Herbert, and they played together all day long. Her mother went to the store and bought a lion for her. Isn't that nice of her? Look, here's the lion. She brought him home carrying him in this box, and here's the lion. Let's see what Herbert does. Every morning, Herbert had a hot cooked cereal breakfast. For lunch, he had spinach and poached egg. For supper, he had baked potato and applesauce and a round cookie with raisins in it. Look, they were eating that for dinner. Of course, he had sun baths at the seaside, well, doesn't that look like Ruby playing by our ocean? Yes, it does to me. I missed that, but we're going to do that pretty soon. We get to go spend the night in not too long, maybe a few weeks, three or four weeks. We'll see. And the way he took his cod liver oil was simply beautiful. Now, I'm not sure, but I think cod liver oil is just like... Um, fish oil today. They make pills, Marshall takes them, of fish oil, and it makes you healthy. At least that's what Marshall thinks. Herbert grew and grew and grew. Look, he started out as a baby, and he got bigger and bigger. And look at all his hair. That's called a mane. Lions have manes. Male lions do anyway. Females do not. He was such a friendly lion. When Sally's grandmother came to the house, he always put his paws on her shoulder, licked her face with his big pink tongue. Sally's grandmother did not really like this, but Herbert did it just the same. He was so friendly. Look, there he is licking grandmother. She didn't like that. Herbert did. Sometimes when Millie licks you, I bet you don't like that, but you know what? Millie does. When the milkman or the postman or the grocer or a butcher's boy came to the door, Herbert always ran to meet them. That man was bringing groceries, and he got scared. That was the picture we saw earlier. Does Millie run to the door when somebody comes? She knows, because when we used to babysit at your old house, Every time your parents would come home, Millie would know before we would, and she'd get up and bark and run to the door to greet them. Sally told people over and over that Herbert was just friendly, but they did not believe her. They were sure he wanted to bite them. Pretty soon, the, people, the postman stopped bringing the letters to Sally's house. He was so afraid of poor Herbert. And the butcher's boy stopped bringing the meat. And the milkman stopped bringing the milk. And the grocer stopped bringing the groceries. And all of Sally's friends stopped coming to see her. 
and his, her grandmother and grandfather and her aunts and uncles and cousins stopped coming. Do you think they were scared of Herbert, even though he wouldn't hurt them? Yes, they were. I think they were all very scared. Let's see what they do. At last, Sally's father said Herbert would have to go live at the zoo in a cage with bars so he could not frighten people anymore. Sally cried and cried, and Herbert cried too. He did not want to go to the zoo. He didn't want to leave Sally. Then Sally's mother had a wonderful idea. Why not send Herbert to our ranch in the mountains, she said. Then he could live outdoors and have plenty of room. So Sally's parents sent Herbert to the mountains, and so keeping her from being too lonely without him, they gave her a very small kitten. Look, they gave her a little kitten to play with, and Herbert was in the mountains. Let's see what happens. But up in the ranch, Herbert was sad, for he had no one to play with. One day he decided to go back to town and see Sally. All day he ran and ran. I don't know how he knew the way. When he got hungry, he stopped at places and ate candy and pie and ice cream cones. He hadn't any money with him, but that was all right, for no one thought to ask him to pay. They probably all got scared and ran away while he ate. At last he reached Sally's house. She was so delighted to see him. That night they had an extra special supper to celebrate with vanilla ice cream and lemon layer cake. I did not know that lions like that, but I guess they do because Herbert seemed to be very content eating it. In the middle of the night, oh, in the middle of the night, Herbert was very ill with a terrible pain in his tummy. Nobody knew about all the indigestible things he had eaten on his way from the ranch, but even the doctor and Herbert said he must have eaten something. He had a tummy ache. Do you ever get a tummy ache? It, he wasn't happy about it, but he did have a tummy ache. When Herbert was well enough to sit up and eat milk toast, Sally's parents had a serious talk about him. They talked and talked, and finally Sally's father said, well, dear, it looks to me as if the only thing we can do is move out to the ranch and stay there. Then Sally and Herbert can play together all the time. And Sally's mother said, Darling, I'm afraid you're right. It's the only thing we can do. I guess they were going to move to the ranch. And so they packed everything up, got in the car, and moved to the ranch. Well, that's very nice. That was a nice thing to do. And now Sally's mother and father often say they don't see how they ever stood it living in the city, where there isn't any fresh air or scenery, and the streetcars keep you awake at night. As for Sally and Herbert, they are very happy. They have each other to play with every day, and a whole big ranch to play on. And what more could anyone wish? The end. What a nice story. And it had a very nice ending. Well, I hear Mumu is back, and I'm just about out of time for this recording, so I'm going to tell you, be nice to your brothers and sisters, especially the little ones. Rex and Avi, they need looking after, and you're big enough to look after them, so make sure that they're safe. Be nice to Manny, be nice to Ruby, be nice to Maya, be nice to Avi, be nice to Anya, and Rex, of course. I hope you have a great, great day. I hope that you're nice to each other, and I hope you listen to what your mommy and daddy say. I love you all, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.